Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your September 2021 Mercury Retrograde reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will cancer be affected by the September 2021 Mercury Retrograde? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Okay. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides. Ooh, goodness. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides angels and spirit guides so at the bottom is our rooted self the left hand side is our inner self the middle the heart the emotional self the right hand side the public arena the public self so let's see what the cards have to say we have the lovers which is gemini energy very interesting especially if you're born on the cusp with gemini or if you have gemini within your natal chart gemini is ruled by mercury so when it comes to love when it comes to us being in love with our lives and everything like that we're really going to be swayed by the power of this mercury retrograde it's going to hit us a bit more intensely than it may hit other people we're just going to be more deeply affected by it so that's just something to be mindful of right off the bat and then we have the empress we have this place of claiming our throne claiming our power this has us seeing things in such a different light that it actually makes us stronger it makes us better in a really real way we have the craftsman of air we're learning how to use this mercury retrograde actually for our benevolence for in our favor you know how to move things forward how to get to where it is that we want to be how to craft things in a way that opens up doors that leads us in a direction we didn't think we could we could go in and then brings us to the seven of fire the seven of fire the seven of wands is knowing our strength and knowing what we align with with where we want to be with who we are and what we desire when to fight and when not to that's going to be super important important and like with lions you know they don't fight all the time and they don't go after everything because they have to reserve their energy when they strike they have to strike meaningfully and that's going to be us during this time we can't get involved or you know corrupted by the chaotic energy of mercury retrograde when we strike when we go after something we have to be very mindful and intentional and then moves us to our emotional selves, which we have temperance, which is Sagittarius energy. If we have that within our natal chart, it's coming through very powerfully right here at our heart. And then we have cancer. You know, we have the chariot. This is us, cancer, coming through at our heart, at our center. We are most comfortable in relationship to our heart. And so this is a time where we might find ourselves wearing our hearts on our sleeves. And 
I say that with a bit of hesitation because spirit, not, not that spirit doesn't want us to, but we don't want to. We don't want to let everybody know all of this about us. There is an element of, I need to keep to myself what I need to keep to myself. I need to look at what I desire, I want, I need. And there's a sense here of harnessing our emotions to be able to move us forward. So we have to be very mindful of what we let show and what we're, we're building within us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have the fool. This is an adventure that we're em embracing in the public arena and the eight of wands. You know, things happen quickly. <laughs> things happen quickly and and with determination and with and around communication. So Mercury retrograde has a tendency to affect, you know, communication, words, you know, travel and has us losing things and, and contracts and everything like that. So here, when things move fast, when it comes to communication, we have to be really aware of that and really on that because this is a time where things can move really fast, but it can also mean that things can fall apart really fast or things can move in a direction we don't want them to move. So being aware of that is going to be imperative for us. Let's look at the energy we have to be mindful of during this time. Oh, goodness. There we go. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. We have the king of fire. So fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is also just a sense of we have to be very mindful of our passion during this time. We can put ourselves too much into something and it's success. It's prosperity. It's bounty is a direct reflection on us. And so we have to be really, really mindful about this during this time. How am I moving forward? Where is it that I want to be? What is it that I desire? We also have to make sure that our tempers just don't get fed and fed and fed by this Mercury retrograde or by the frustration of this Mercury retrograde to be able to say, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is the centering of myself. This is what I desire is going to be everything. So we have to just be mindful that our emotional self can be a little bit more reactionary. We're also going to be drawn to people during this time who are a little bit more reactionary to things than is healthy for us to be around. So just really be mindful of that. It moves us then into our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And this is psychic development, which makes perfect sense for this Mercury retrograde. Now, during this Mercury retrograde, Mercury is going to be conjunct the fixed star Spica. Now, I'm jumping ahead, of course, because we're going to get into everything. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry. Almost everything that this full moon has to offer. And so when it comes to this, there is this sense and this increase of psychic development and psychic awareness, this increase of intuitive, you know, really coming together, focusing, understanding. Now, this is going to be intensely powerful for us around our third eye, around us seeing things more openly, more honestly than we have seen things before, around us not being fooled by other people's lies or the way people want things to go about in the way that they actually need to go about. So that's going to be an astoundingly powerful thing for us. So let's start talking about this Mercury retrograde. This is going to be like no other Mercury retrograde we've seen in a really long time. And this is actually going to be in a very positive way that this Mercury retrograde is coming into our lives. Now, Mercury retrograde, we see, we see it as a breakdown and it is a breakdown of technology, of communication, of, you know, of contracts, of travel. We lose things again, that was stated earlier, but it also is a sense that we can be more prone to breakdowns, to nervousness, to anxiety, to, you know, experiencing delays of getting to where it is that we want to be. And again, we lose things. So that adds to our frustration. Now, a Mercury retrograde usually happens three to four times a year. This time in 2021, it's happened three times. So, so that's good. It doesn't happen before. And it lasts for about 24 days. Now, we also have a shadow period before the Mercury retrograde and after the Mercury retrograde. We find ourselves during this time dwelling on things and also on the past. So we can really beat ourselves up, especially if we are too emotionally hard on ourselves because we feel things with the emotions, with our centering of being self and soul so intensely from the heart. We really have to be mindful of that and be kinder to ourselves. Then we are being. So that's going to be really important. If you can avoid, you know, signing contracts during this time, if you can avoid, you know, making really big decisions, that would be great. If you can't make sure that either you're having another set of eyes, look at it, actually, you know what, make sure that you set it aside and then look at it later. Don't sign anything too quickly. Don't make anything, don't make any decisions too quickly with anything. Make sure that you step back, even if you just take an hour, even if it's like, or, you know, 15, 20 minutes to be able to think things through, to be able to center yourself. That's going to be the best thing for you. It doesn't matter if it's not the best thing for everybody else. 
and why I was going to say, you know, let somebody else look it over, but they're also going through a Mercury retrograde. So we want to make sure that we're coming to things with our eyes, with our understanding. Also during this time, really, really big, make sure you double check your emails, your posts, whatever, you know, letters you put out in the post, like traditional mail, that's going to be really, really, really important. Again, if you have to write anything, make sure you look it over an hour later, a day later, something like that. If you can, that's going to be the best and the healthiest thing for you during this retrograde. Now on September 6th, on the 6th of September, the shadow period of Mercury retrograde began. Now this means that you will have gotten an idea around something that is controlled by the Mercury aspect, thinking, speaking, contracts, travel, you know, all the big things, thinking and speaking. And you're going to see it kind of playing out and you're going to see it playing out during Mercury retrograde. And you're going to be like, hmm, that's weird. So do be mindful of that. Now on the 27th of September, we have the Mercury retrograde beginning. And we can already tell from our roots that we are greatly affected by Mercury during this time. This Mercury retrograde is intense for us. Why? Because we have the Gemini aspect. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So we're going to have a sense that this Mercury retrograde is more intense for us. The planetary alignment, which if you want to check that out, that's in my new, not new moon, full moon video that's for you guys that was recently put out. All the planetary alignments are in there. I just don't want to overwhelm you guys with so much information. So that's in a separate video. Check that out. It has the planetary alignments in the very beginning. And and yeah, see, see what that says for you. They're, they're good planetary alignments. We just have to be mindful of one thing. I think it's Mercury conjunct Pluto. I don't know if it's conjunct Pluto, but it's Mercury something Pluto. So just be mindful of that. Otherwise, there are really good things coming forward for us in the planetary alignment. Now, Mercury is going to be conjunct the fixed star Arcturus during this time. Now, the star is the star is all about obtaining justice through power. It's all about aligning ourselves with power, with intention, with determination to move forward. And that's actually going to be something that we're really good at during this time. And also in life in general, when we have the chariot, the charioteer is the ruler moving forward with the emotions, with the intentions, with what we desire. So power through justice, through being this, this voice of this voice that people listen to this voice of, I was going to say power is is intense. So here during this time that that brings us forward and it also brings us riches, esteem, and it makes us astoundingly determined. All right. We have to be mindful of our drive during this time. The King of Wands comes through as the energy to be, to be mindful of. We want to achieve on the earthly level, almost at any cost. And that for a water sign energy can really damage us. We need to find the balance, find the faith within ourselves, find the harmony within ourselves and open up the doors. Now this fixed star Arcturus can promote lasting success if we can stay in a positive mindset and a high energy vibrational mindset. If we can't, we'll feel overwhelmed. It can make us feel very overwhelmed because it's almost going to be like, no matter what I do, if my name isn't on in neon lights on top of a building, if I haven't created, you know, the, the pyramids, I have failed because somebody else has created better than me or bigger than me. So we have to be aware of that during this time to be thankful of our successes, to make sure that we give thanks to our successes, to the people around us. Instead of saying you should be more, we say, I give thanks to where I am right now and to the people who are around me, who are either propelling me forward because I don't want to be here anymore or who are showing me the grace of existence. Mercury is going to be also conjunct the fixed star Spica. Now the fixed star Spica has the psychic development, the intuition coming forward, which is absolutely beautiful. Now this fixed star also brings us success, renowned riches, fame, and a sweet disposition, just like a kindness to us, which doesn't the world mean need more of that. Now we have to remember that this doesn't have, it's not going to be to the same degree for everyone. So it's not going to be that everybody has their names being called or, you know, red carpets being rolled out or that everybody becomes really super kind. What it does mean is that their disposition becomes nicer. It does mean that, you know, there's a sense of acknowledgement towards what we're doing to how we're moving forward. Even if it's just from ourselves, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm really getting this. I'm really moving me forward. I'm really proud of me. This also brings love for the arts. It brings us in alignment with the arts and with science and can also be, this can also be hard for us 
if we tend to be a little bit innocent around things, a little bit of a more maybe naive approach that people could say, but this kinder, you know, gentler approach, people are going to see it on as, oh, you're weak. I'm going to take advantage of you. So we have to stay firm in our intuition and what we desire in our idea of success and who we are and how we're moving forward because we have the strength to us. I mean, this is a time where we are we're really seeing ourselves and embracing this strength of determination and focus. We have the Empress, we have the Lion, you know, standing forward with the Seven of, of Wands. We have ourselves as a craftsman discovering through the power of Mercury, discovering, you know, the way things fit together, what we want, temperance, balance within us, a major arcana card, not a card to be messed around with. And then ourselves as the charioteer, ourselves as the chariot moving forward, harnessing our emotions, but also understanding that a chariot was driven by only the most successful in the military back in ancient times. Just a poor, you know, schlub off the street was not given a chariot. It was a lot of money it took a lot of skill and it was ridden ridden <laughs> driven there we go by pharaohs by kings and queens and emperors and empresses i mean there's a hypothesis around that's how two in common died by falling off the back of a a chariot i don't know if that's been disproven anytime by now but i mean it's still out there so it, they were powerful expensive tools to be used and that's what we are powerful expensive tools to be used, to guide ourselves forward with our bodies, with our hearts, with our minds, with our souls, to achieve what we want. It's not putting us down to a market value. What it's saying is that you are a blessed divine being. Embrace it. Absolutely embrace it during this time. And don't let kindness become a weakness because it's not a weakness. People just don't understand how strong you have to be to remain kind in this world. They just don't get it because they never were there to begin with. Now, again, this brings us an above average alignment ability with our psychic development, our intuition, we are on point. When it comes to this, our third eye chakra is opening up in psychic development. We see what others cannot, and that can be overwhelming. So we do have to be mindful about that. And we have to you know, know that sometimes, even if we feel like, oh wow, this, or oh wow, that, you know, I should move that way, it should move this way, or I get this instantaneous judgment of this person or that you know, thing, we have to look at things objectively too. We don't want to just ride off of our intuition during this time, though that's kind of a good place to be. We, we just want to make sure that we're backed up by facts. This is a great time for scientists, writers, artists, and anybody who's creative. Now, on the 18th of October, when Mercury retrograde ends, we go into another shadow period, and this is Mercury stationary direct, all right? And it lasts from the 18th of October to the 2nd of November. The planetary alignment here is Mercury sextile Venus, which actually brings love into the situation. We are the center of our own hearts. This is awesome for us. It brings this charming, soothing energy that makes us just feel good, wants us to follow love and peace and, and harmony. And as we do so, we start to set down roots towards what we love. And we say, there's validity here. There's beauty, there's serenity. Mercury trine Saturn is also coming into play during this time. And it brings us this practicality. You know, Saturn just brings this practical nature into things. It brings us determination and, you know, achievements that come after, after struggle or difficulty, that come to projects that we haven't finished, that need to be finished, that make us, you know, break down barriers that have been held, holding us back before. Now with the star alignment, we have Mercury conjunct the fixed star Vinda Matrix, which I believe I said that correctly. If you come to this time, now this is the stars are a little bit more tricky than the the planetary alignments during this Mercury shadow period. Because if you come to Vinda the the Matrix, there we go, with negative energy, with hurts, with pains, with disappointments, with you know, anger and upset and, and melancholy and depression and anxiety and everything like that it compounds it. It can make things a lot more intense. We have to make sure that either we build up our energy vibration to be able to embrace our soul and what we desire and what we want and, and come to things from a very positive mindset. If we are in a negative mindset, we have to make sure that we're talking to somebody. We have to make sure that we're doing things, sitting out in the sun, you know, getting that vitamin D, increasing our, our serotonin level to, to help combat melancholy, hastiness, and impulsiveness, because there's going to be a sense of, well, I just want something to happen. I just need something to change. And this, the star, Vinda Matrix, plays off of that really intensely. It also can draw us to the more macabre, darker aspects of things. So we can find ourselves watching, you know, a lot of true crime or watching a lot of murder, you know, 
movies or horror movies or, or stuff like that. And we just kind of have to say, no, you know, I don't care how much we enjoy it. We might say, okay, you know, it's, it's super fun. I, I really like it. It's going to bring down our energy vibration in a really real way. And we have to put ourselves first. We just really have to put ourselves first during this time. So I might be a little, being a little bit intense on this, but really because your heart is so intense and Mercury retrograde and the element of the planetary alignments of Mercury are going to be so powerfully aligned with you and effective and have a powerful effect on you. Just, just say no, you know, just make sure that you're, you're staying in a much more positive plate place. Mercury conjunct the fixed star Por Porima. All right. Now, again, we have to come to this with a positive energy vibration, because if we do, this almost becomes like a superstar, you know, a super power star alignment with Parima, because we can see the underhanded side to people without being drawn into it. It's like, oh, I see you. I see your corruption. I see your your anger. I see your deceit. I see your hatefulness. I, I get it. I don't need to be a part of this. If we don't, what we do, if we come to this with a lower, lower energy vibration, we will start to worry and, you know, think everything's our fault and put everything on our shoulders and debt ourselves and hold ourselves back. So we have to be mindful about this during this time. Again, we have the lovers, we have the Mercury energy coming in with Gemini. I just really see this as it's going to affect you and it's going to affect you to the roots of your being. Be careful that you're not being drawn in just by something pretty, something shiny, something that everybody can ooh and awe over and that it doesn't have the depth. It you know, isn't what you really expect because underneath the water here, she is a skeleton here. There's a skull. There's like this macabre aspect to it. And we just have to be mindful of this. It's like, am I falling in love? Am I going to come out of the water and be this beautiful being and be just absolutely in love with the way that I'm moving forward? Or am I going to be drowned in the water and take down, you know, what, and t yeah, have taken away from me what had once given me joy. So that's going to be important to come to a realization of the empress we're claiming our throne we're claiming our power we know what it is that we want there's a sense here of i didn't know i had this power to me i didn't know that i can move forward this way that i could go after this that i could embrace this like this so there's a real sense of a door being open and we're being like oh my gosh excuse me oh my gosh i didn't know that this could be me now the craftsman of air we start to use this mercury retrograde because it's so intensely intertwined with us to, to create, to solve problems, to move ourselves forward, to, you know, embrace what we want, to get to where it is that we need to be. And we start to learn when to fight and when not to fight, you know, when to move forward and when to, to hold ourselves back. That's going to be really important because during this Mercury retrograde, we can feel like I just have to fight every fight. I just have to go after everything. And what spirit is saying here is like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Step into your energy, your power, your essence, yourself. See what is worthy of your time and energy and see what isn't and be really mindful of this because there is going to be the sense of, but I can achieve, but I can, you know, make so much happen. Spirit's like, you can only make so much happen. You only have so much energy. If you burn your, your candles at both ends, you will just be left with exhaustion. We have temperance, balance, greater understanding. We need to balance our hearts. We need to balance our practical selves and our spiritual selves. This again, links us to the full moon in Pisces. We need to balance what we desire, what we want, what we need, who we are, there is a whole sense of the balance of the heart because our hearts are where we dwell. The hearts are so important to us. If we don't come to things from an air of love, from an air of emotional commitment, we come to things kind of blasé. So we have to make sure that our hearts are there, that we're moving ourselves forward towards love and acceptance and beauty and understanding that we're tying in the reins, you know, we're using the horses to guide us forward. Yes, but we're also pulling in the reins not to be taken on this wild ride. It moves us then to the fool and the fool is this beautiful new beginning. It is the sense of opening up the door. It is the sense of saying, yes, now I'm going on this adventure. Now I am tackling things in the public arena. People can sit there and say, oh my gosh, you're being foolish. Like, oh my gosh, do you know what you're doing? Do you know how you're moving forward? You know, what's going on here? And what we need to say to ourselves is no hero's journey starts without them being thought of as a fool. So there is, there will be no power, no brilliance, no achievement, no, you know, moving forward, no, no sense of, of the unobtainable being obtained. If you don't first try, if you just follow the footsteps of everybody else. And so this is saying here, be very mindful of the passion that you put into things. Cause you're going to tend here, cancer to put in 110 to everything. That's what we have to be mindful of. We're going to tend to 
to just put everything into everything that we're doing, everything that we're trying. We want all our interactions to be, you know, best, deepest interactions possible. We want all our work to be absolutely astounding. Spirit is saying here, be mindful of how you're moving forward. Be mindful of what needs your energy and what doesn't need your energy, which what just sounds good. And put your time, effort into that. And it starts a new beginning for you. It starts a new road forward. And then it brings us to the Eight of Wands. Things happen fast during this Mercury retrograde. Okay, when it comes to communications, because here it says at the bottom communication, just be mindful of everything with communication and be mindful that at times it can get out of hand. Like things can start moving forward in a way where you'll be like, wait a minute, I didn't say that, I didn't sign that, I didn't do that. You know, let us put on the brakes. So with the with the Eight of Wands, there's this intensity to the way things are moving forward. We need to make sure that they're moving forward in a way that doesn't just absolutely consume us, in a way that doesn't just take us on this ride and say, well, here's where you land, be happy with it. We want to be a little bit more mindful during this time. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the death card, and this is Scorpio energy. The dying way of the old self, the rebirth of the new, the sense of secrets. We need to be mindful of secrets during this time. Not only the secrets that other people have, but the secrets that we ourselves are keeping. We kind of want to bring things to the light, but we don't want to overshare. So there's going to be an important balance that is found. Then we have our subconscious chakra energy, and that is the universal light. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. There's a sense of letting the light within us shine, being that center, being that brilliance, being that power. And knowing also that the light is going to be so important to us, just being in the sun, connecting with, with the light of creativity, even the light of, of our own majesty. It then moves us to the, to the fool once again at our roots, the subconscious rooted energy. And this is a sense of needing to go on our journey, needing to go on our adventure, needing to open up the door and see and find and embrace us. The fool will be people saying you're foolish and that's okay. They can think whatever they need to think. As long as we're not, you know, pouring money into something that we're not seeing a return on investment for, and we're kind of being taken advantage of because we just think the more I push through, the better it will be. We step back and we say, okay, how am I moving forward? What can I do? How can I open up this door? That becomes the tool for us to set up a really successful path forward to say, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is who I am. And then moves us to our subconscious inner self and we have the three of water the three of cups being able to embrace what we love but also being able to say i'm not celebrating this anymore you know this is toxic for me i don't want it i don't need it i'm, I'm finding my own joy i'm finding my own rainbow i'm, I'm moving myself forward in love and in beauty and remembering and standing with the people who have st stood by us who have aided us instead of chasing after as we tend to do as human beings chasing after the people who have hurt us or letting their words play over and over again in our heads instead of the people who have celebrated us and rejoiced in us and then moves us to our inner self our subconscious emotional self and that's the seven of swords reversed there's a sense of i'm letting go of a burden i'm letting go of a burden that i've carried for a really long time and as i release it i i find my own strength i find my own power my own voice it then brings us to our subconscious inner self not inner self, public arena message. And that's the 10 of wands, responsibility. It's embracing responsibility, yes, but it's not being overpowered and destroyed by responsibility. It's also being able to put down the weight that we have carried, everything that we carry, everything that needs our attention, that pulls us half a million different ways, that takes and takes and takes. And now we get to say, I get to embrace the being of my soul, myself, and what I love. I get to make firewood, you know, out of, of these branches that I've been carrying, these wands that I've been carrying. I get to to warm myself and inspire myself as I move forward. All right. All right, Cancer. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. Now I'm just going to get my little mallet or whatever you call it, the piece that you use for the singing bowl because that's what dropped before. All right, let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, the beauty, and the complexity of this Mercury retrograde. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Cancer, and may you have a blessed Mercury retrograde.